Hello everybody. I'm talking about the third temple today because I feel that it's a very major sign of the end times and, and I believe it might well be built very soon. It's been 70, and it's been 2,000 years nearly when the last uh, temple, the second temple, was destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE on the 9th of Av. Even though Christ had warned them Israel and the Pharisees at the time, that if they followed man's traditions rather than breaking God's laws, that would happen. But worse than that, they rejected the Messiah, the Son of God. That's the worst thing they could have done. And obviously, when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and the Temple, the diaspora happened, meaning the Israelites scattered throughout the earth and basically for 2,000 years they never had a place to, to, no land they lost their land but in Jeremiah chapter 30 God done a prophecy that they would come they would be gathered together again Jeremiah 30 verses 1 the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord that says the Lord the Lord God of Israel Write in a book all the words I have spoken to you. For behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall take possession of it. See, that prophecy came true. because Nearly 2,000 years later, in 1960. I think seven. That that was there was a, what do you call it the six day war between Israel and three nations that was Jordan, Egypt and and Syria, and and they regained the land of Israel. And God was on obviously on Israel's side. They managed to beat them all in just six days, regaining regaining Gaza, Gaza Strip. Uh, East Jerusalem and uh, you know Golan Heights. So basically, after two thousand years, uh, that prophecy became true. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter thirty, God regained, helped them regain the land. In nineteen sixty-seven, the land of Israel became theirs again. But concerning uh, the third temple, yes, there's some scriptures I found concerning. A uh, third temple that will be built, and Second Thessalonians chapter two verse one to seventeen. Now concerning the coming of the, our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered, gathered together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind and alarmed, either by spirit or a spoken word or letter, seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way that. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness, lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, or the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself against so-called gods or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. That's, that was Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1. And now in Daniel... Chapter nine twenty seven, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, and for half of the week, and he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the on the wing of abomination shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out on the, on the desolator. That's in the middle of the tribulation, he will exalt himself, and in Daniel. Uh, Chapter 9, 24, 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to put an end to sin and to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and profit, and to anoint a most holy place. Know therefore and stand uh, know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and re 
and build Jerusalem to the coming of the anointed one, a prince. There shall be seven weeks. Then for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again with squares and moats, but in a troubled time. And after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week and a half of a week, and he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. As I said, in the middle of the tribulation, that he will desolate and profane God's temple. And also uh, Daniel 11, uh, 31, uh, which also says, Forces from him shall appear and profane the temple and fort fortress, and shall take away the regular burnt offerings, and they shall set up abomination that makes desolate. So, as you can see, the Bible does prophesy that the third temple will be built. And there's even one in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 also shows that. But I recently got uh, read an article in a, that was posted on August 16th, 2016. Very recently, Israel prepares to build a temple, the third temple. This is it. it this is... Israel prepares to build the third temple as it mourns previous temple destruction. It may be almost 2,000 years since the Roman Empire destroyed the second temple in 70 AD, and even more since the Babylonians destroyed the first temple. But a growing movement of Jews is determined to see the re temple rebuilt and once again takes its place at the centre of Jerusalem. This past weekend saw thousands of Israelis from across the country Converge on the capital to participate in the fast of the ninth of Av, Tishbe Av, the ninth of Av, the day of mourning they call it, for the destruction of the first and second holy temples in Jerusalem, which took place on the same day, centuries apart. Can you imagine that? The same day, you know, God is using the ninth of Av uh, to, to to pass judgment, both the first and second temples. Events to commemorate the Day of Mourning include gathering at the Western Wall, as well as marching around the walls of Old City, reading the, from the Book of Lamentation, which Jeremiah wrote. Traditional customs also include not, not, also include not greeting one another during the fast, refraining from studying the Torah, uh, and it goes on, uh, refraining from leather footwear, cosmetics, all this a culmination of three weeks of keeping various customs that symbolise mourning, even more stringent ones during the nine days leading to the fast. It seems like terrible things have happened to the Jewish nation on the ninth of Av. It's like it says uh, for one some examples: the expulsion of the Jews from Britain in 1290, or the expulsion of the Jews in, of Spain by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. In 1492, even World War One erupted in 1914, causing untold suffering to the Jews of Europe and well, and Palestine, and setting the stage for World War Two and the Holocaust. This is a Mount uh, Temple Mount. Um, this is here. I, I understand this. Per, what do you call it? Rabbi Ben Dehan said he understands that the Temple Mount is a beating heart of the Jewish people. It's true. The mount and the temple are the hearts of the nation of Israel, and without the heart, there is no body. So, and there's, oh yeah, there's also Yahuwah Glick, a notable temple mount activist, said this time, the time has come to replace mourning with action. For 2,000 years we lived out the verse in the Book of Lamentations, you shall surely weep at night no more. We must stop weeping and take, start to take action. That's what he actually said. You know, so, so you can see by this that the temple 
the, the third temple might well be built very soon. But that is a major sign. Even Yehuda, Yehuda Glick has actually joined the Knesset, uh, uh, this activist who wants uh, the Temple Mount to be free to all religions to to he, He's actually joined the parliament. So, But not only that, the, the Temple Institute has created has actually made all the furnishing furniture ready, all the ornaments and all the harps, everything has been built. All they and even even lately, uh, Rabbi Baruch Kahane Malachi has been elected as the high priest. So, you know, it's a major sign this third temple being built soon. So, what can we learn from this? So, so if we look in in uh, Luke twenty one. Verses 34 to 36. Be on your guard. Don't let yourself become occupied with too much feasting and drinking and with the worries of this life. Or that day may suddenly catch you like a trap, for it will come upon all the people everywhere on earth. Be on the alert and pray always that you will have the strength to go safely through all those things that will, will happen and to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, don't be like those people in the time of Noah, that eating and drinking, just you know, taking no notice of the, the signs which is all around us. You know, if this third temple is built, and maybe, just maybe, the, it, you know, it's time because of the blood moons, we must keep awake, and as it says, you know, be on your guard, be watchful, and pray always. And there's only one person that can save us when God's uh, judgment comes. And that is in John 11, 25. That's Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Can you imagine that? What a wonderful reward. So... Please heed the warnings, you know, the end is very, very soon now. If this temple is built, you know the two witnesses will come soon. You know, uh, the Antichrist, you know, it's very, very near. You need to, uh, you know, repent now, turn away from wickedness, turn to righteousness, and repent through uh, Yeshua's name. Because only he can give you salvation. Because he's the, the true mediator, the high priest. And so we will be counted worthy to, and avoid the, the great tribulation. Believe me, you won't want to be left behind. So you take care. God bless. Bye.